Hi, I'm Ryan Jacobson, Product Marketing Manager of DRAM here at Crucial. I'm Jake Walcott, Product Line Manager for Crucial DRAM. Awesome, so we know DDR5 is right around the corner. Um, let's talk about that. So typically we know there's a speed increase. T talk to us about the speed increase first. Right, so the biggest change with DDR5 is we're talking about a massive speed increase. Ever since the DDR2 to DDR3 transition, every speed grade increase has been in increments of 266 mega transfers. So DDR2 to DDR3, DDR3 to DDR4, just take your speed from last year, add 266, and that's your new memory technology. DDR5 changes that mold. And instead of adding 266, we're adding 1600 mega transfers right out the gate. So we're jumping from DDR4 3200 to DDR5 4800. Awesome, okay. So we know there's a speed increase, that's great. What differentiates it from say an overclock? Is there anything else with DDR5 that sets it apart? There is, in addition to speed, the channel efficiency has also been improved. So as an example, when you go buy a car and it says 30 miles to the gallon on the sticker, and you take it home and you only get 20 miles to the gallon. That's because in a real world use condition for that car, your miles per gallon efficiency isn't as ideal as what you what represented the number on the sticker. Memory is the same way. We all know what theoretical bandwidth we should get, but under a truly random workload, gaming, browsing the internet, watching videos, you're not actually getting the full potential of that bandwidth. DDR5 changes the architecture so that we can harness more of that bandwidth and get a lot closer to the true theoretical bandwidth number. So when you're increasing your cores or you're demanding more from your system, the memory can keep up. Gotcha, okay. So really, as an end user, what I'm getting is I'm getting all the horsepower and I'm getting the efficiency combined. So that's really gonna, as you state, your car is gonna get, get everything that you wanted on the sticker for the most part. Exactly. Awesome, okay, great. So I'm looking at being an early adopter of DDR5. I'll probably buy a desktop right out of the gate. Um, it's gonna be all new. We know it's gonna be in that space. Where, where else is it gonna be? Where else is DDR5 gonna be? So it will be everywhere. And that's the neatest thing about DDR5 is you talk about the desktop system at home. So, okay, your system will boot faster. It will load the internet faster. You can game faster. All of those things are great for you as the end user. But behind the scenes, we're going to have more high-end workstations that will have better memory performance so they can create better content or more content more quickly. And then all of that content goes into the cloud, into servers that now have DDR5 memory that reach a new level of performance. And so they can distribute that content either more quickly or they can distribute higher end content to you as the user who has a higher performance system to consume it. Wow, okay. So <clears throat> I'm truly excited about the gaming aspect, right? I'm a gamer. Um, I look at everything that uh, they're doing with titles. Uh, they're, they're utilizing more cores. So really, I guess for DDR5 as an early adopter, I could expect maybe a more immersive experience, more frame rates, just overall a better experience, right? Correct. When I look at how I used computers 10 to 15 years ago for checking email and paying some bills <laughs> to how I'm going to be using all these DDR5 systems, I've got kids that are gaming, I've got kids that are editing videos, they're watching YouTube videos for school and for fun. It's all different and DDR5 brings such a new level of performance to that whole ecosystem of creating the content, distributing the content, and consuming the content that I'm just excited to see what this new technology can bring. That's great. Well, it's right around the corner. If you want to stay up to date, go to crucial.com slash DDR5.